our conscious mind is where we create our reality. Our thoughts become actions, become things, become our reality. So when people say you create your own reality, this is our thinking mind, this is where we think about what we're going to do. What you think you are and who you think you are, all the thinking about the me that I am, that happens here in the conscious mind. It also houses, this is really important, our five senses. And it's our five senses that we use to um, access the memories of our subconscious mind. So with those five senses, everything oh, you see, hear, smell, taste, touch, feel, the sixth sense of feeling and emotions, they go down into the subconscious to get the memories and they trigger. And we know spontaneous, um, with spontaneous hypnotic regression, if you like, is just the simple example of you smell a cologne, and you're like, hmm, I remember him. Or <laughs> suddenly you've got a new memory. Or you hear a certain song and suddenly your heart's broken again because it was just so heartbreaking at that experience or whatever it was. Or you can immediately be happy and excited and jumping for joy on the sound of a song. Or whatever it might be, a smell might remind you of a different country. You get the idea. These are little examples. What they do is they access the subconscious where the memories are stored and bring them up to the conscious mind so you remember them. That's spontaneous regression, spontaneous hypnotic regression. So hypnosis is a natural yet altered state of mind that people go into and out of at any point in time, hundreds of times a day, with or without someone like me, you guys do it anyway. If you can daydream, if you can drive a car, you can do hypnosis. People say you can and you can't and I'm not suggestible or I'm not hypnotizable, you can't hypnotize me. But if you want to, you can. It's as simple as that. So. The subconscious mind is then the storehouse of all of your memories. It's the storehouse of all of your emotions, your imaginations, and all your creations. So we're creative in our subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is always driving you away from what it perceives as dangerous and painful and towards what it perceives as safe and pleasurable. And it's made that up based upon the perceptions it's made up about the past. We're going to get onto that in a moment with beliefs. Um, as far as your subconscious mind is concerned, it is always right. So we've got to be really, really careful what we're proving ourselves right about. I don't want to prove to you guys that I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't want to prove that I'm not good enough, I'm too small, I'm too little, I'm insignificant, I'm not worthy, I'm unlovable. I don't want to prove to anyone any of those things. But we want to become aware of what it is that we believe down here. Because the subconscious mind's always, 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 always been recording. This means it's been recording and making up stuff and things about you and the world since the year dot. So that could mean it's recording whether you're awake or asleep, whether you're in a coma, under anaesthetic, which has really huge implications for the medical profession. Um, it's recording whether you're alive or dead. It's recording whether you're in this body or a different body. It's recording whether you're in this life or a different life. If your belief system allows you to believe that that's happened or that's true or that's available to us. Um, yeah. So that means it's making up a bunch of positive and negative thoughts and feelings and ideas about you and the world and how you fit into it and, and what I think about how I fit into it and you think about me and, and what happened at that situation in this time. And these are all the little me stories about what's happened in my life and where I'm going and what I'm doing and what you think about me and da 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 da. So there's a lot of stuff in there. So the superconscious mind, hang on, let me go back to the conscious mind for a minute. I just want to give you guys an analogy of how we use the conscious mind. Just look at the conscious mind as if it is a garden. It's the garden of your mind. Because only you can think in your mind. I can't make you think anyway. I just can't say, you've got to think like this. Because you're only going to think like this if it's coming, because you're conditioning your mind and making your mind receive that way of thinking. So if you imagine it like it's a garden, and you only plant positive seed thoughts in the garden of your mind. You only plant positive thoughts. And then what kind of seeds are you planting in the garden of your mind? Are they the ones that are slightly tough and sturdy? Are they big, solid trees that are rigid and unbending and don't move? Do they sway and move with the times? Are they the kind of garden that opens up to new ways of harvesting, new ways of 
growing your crops? What about the fences and the boundaries? How rigid